Hi, I'm Daphne Richards and this is Augie. Our question this week is from Stacy Wilson, who's been cleaning up some of her property in Cedar Creek and is concerned about several dead trees along with other living trees that don't look healthy. Stacy says that the trees in question all seem to have a bluish green growth on their bark, mostly on the oak and mesquite trees. The trees that are still alive seem to be dropping large limbs that are covered with this bluish growth and she's concerned that this possible fungus may get on the new trees that have been recently planted. In addition, is there a way to control or eliminate this problem before it's too late and she loses more trees over the years due to this problematic fungus? Well, Stacy, the good news is these are actually lichen and pose no danger to other surrounding trees. These are entirely common in natural areas, so, so, such as what you've described here on your property in Cedar Creek. Lichens do often grow on the bark of living trees, but they're not feeding on the tree. They may be only growing on the dead bark, not the live tissue. They're not detrimental in and of themselves, but they do indicate a lack of sunlight on the side where they're growing, which is why they're common in natural areas where trees and shrubs grow cl so close together that they exclude light from the understory. They're also slightly more common on stress trees, as most trees across their area are at the moment after years of extended drought. From your email, I'm not sure of your exact nature of your property, but it would seem to me to be a natural or green belty type area of some sort. If so, lichens and other fungi are a completely natural part of the ecosystem and are not anything to worry about. Our plant this week is Rusty Blackhaw Viburnum. This lovely little native can be found growing all over the state, from east to central Texas, mostly along streams and the edges of woodland areas. In its native habitat, you might find a specimen growing up to 30 feet tall, but normally it's much smaller in the landscape, 10 to 20 feet tall and equally as wide, or a little wider. Also in its native habitat, it's quite often a shrubby understory tree, but in a landscape setting will look quite striking as a standalone specimen planted in full sun. The dark green leaves are lustrous and shiny, surrounded by clusters of bright white flowers in spring. Those flowers produce beautiful blue fruit in the fall, and at about the same time, the leaves begin to turn a stunning pinkish mauve to dark purple. Rusty blackhawk can grow in almost any soil type as long as it's well drained. Hardy to zone five, this deciduous small tree requires very little water once established and makes a striking addition to any garden. Our viewer photo this week comes from Michelle Mitchell via Facebook. Michelle wanted to share a tip that she learned from her dad, Bob Laughlin, who's been growing tomatoes for as long as she can remember. In order to get a head start, Bob plants his tomato seedlings in one gallon nursery pots that he then sinks into larger containers outdoors. If a major freeze comes his way, he can literally pull the pots and store them in his shed until the freezing passes. What a great idea. I'm definitely going to steal that one. Thanks Michelle and Bob for sharing. We'd love to hear from you, so please check in at klru.org ctg to send us your questions, pictures, and videos.